Welcome our viewers um, to our second part of the video lesson on radioactivity. I'm your teacher Steve Getao and I do welcome you to these online lessons as we go through and understand more in the world of chemistry. Once more, find more videos on my channel at Steve Getao. 3660. Kindly subscribe so that anytime I upload a new video, you'll be the first one to be notified. Otherwise, welcome to the world of chemistry and straight away we look at nuclear reactions. We said that when a particle is emitted from the nucleus, both the atomic number and the mass number of the nucleide decreases. And that is why we say a new nucleide is formed. Viewers, remember we mentioned what is a nucleide. This is an atom whose composition of the nucleus can be shown in terms of how many protons are there, how many neutrons are there, and that is shown as the atomic mass and atomic number. Now, since alpha particles consist of two protons and two neutrons, we say that the atomic number of the new nuclei will be lowered by two and the mass number will be lowered by four units. Take, for example, the example that I've shown you here, palladium 23491. It decays to give actinium 22989, releasing a helium atom, which is an alpha particle. You realize the new nucleide has a mass less four units. The atomic mass is 229 less all from 234. Also, the atomic number is 89, a drop or a decrease by two. That makes the first point uh, very, very uh, correct. Number two, the equation above is referred to as a nuclear equation. It should be noted that the sum of the mass, the, the, the mass number on the right hand side is equal to the mass number on the left hand side. The sum of protons also on the right hand side is equal to the number of protons on the left hand side. To explain that, look at 20, uh, that is uh, 229 plus 4 gives you. 234. So the mass numbers are balanced on the left and on the right. 89 plus 2 gives you 91. The atomic numbers, that is number of protons, are also balanced on the left and also on the right. When a beta particle is emitted, the atomic number increases by 1 and the mass number remains constant. This is because 1, the bet, during beta emission, a new Tron spontaneously changes into a proton and emits an electron. That is to say, one zero, which is a neutron, decays or is changed. It spontaneously changes into a proton, one one, and releases an electron, zero negative one. The positive charge increases in the process. Number two, the mass of the particles emitted is negligible. Uh, consider carbon-14. When carbon-14 decays to become phosphorus-14-7, emitting an electron, which is a beta particle, 0, negative 1, you find that the mass of the particle 0, negative 1 is negligible. And the same case in the example below there. Now, number three, the emission of gamma rays which is a form of energy, always accompanies other radioactive emissions. They are produced when the remaining particles in the nucleus reorganize themselves into more stable arrangements. And it is important to note here that gamma rays are not shown when writing the nuclear equation because they have no effect on the mass number and also they have no effect on the atomic number of a nucleus. For example, uranium-236 decays to give Barium-14156 plus Krypton-9232 releasing three uh, 
um, neutrons plus a lot of energy. This energy is the gamma rays. So that's what we are saying. The gamma rays are actually a form of energy which is released when that kind of a radiation takes place. In the diagram that we have there, I have shown the radioactive decay series. If we look at the start of it all, you find uranium-235 decays to thorium-231 by releasing an alpha particle. The thorium decays further to give um, radium-231 by releasing by the thorium releasing a beta particle and this goes on and on until we are able to have that full decay cells um whereby we have the stable lead 20782 being released next we look at nuclear fission and nuclear fusion so i believe that correct in nuclear fission this is a splitting process whereby a heavy nucleide undergoes when bombarded by a fast moving neutron. For example, in uranium 235, you bombard it with a fast moving neutron and we generate barium 56 plus krypton and three neutrons plus a lot of energy. You find that due to the bombarding, the uranium disintegrates into relatively stable nucleides, releasing a lot of energy and some radiations. In a nuclear fusion, which is the opposite of fission, the nuclear fusion, in this process, smaller nucleides join together. They combine to form larger or heavier nucleides, releasing a lot or a large quantity of energy. For example, uh, uh, before we go to the example, we look at high temperatures and pressure are required to overcome the repulsion between the atoms. In our example, which we have shown there, two atoms of hydrogen combine to give 4,2 plus Lily, uh, there is a release of one neutron and a lot of energy is released. So, viewers, I want you to see the, the clear-cut difference between fission and fusion. In fission, the heavy nuclei undergo disintegration. In fusion, two light or small nuclei combine to form a heavy one. And due to that, radiations are emitted. What are the differences between nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion? In, what are the similarities? Let's, sorry for that. We look at the similarities first. In both cases, a large quantity of energy is released. Two, the process results in chain reactions. Three, in both cases, subatomic particles such as neutrons accompany the process. Four, the energy released can be harnessed and converted into other forms of useful energy such as electrical energy. And number five, the large amount of energy produced in both cases um, or in both reactions can be very destructive when misused, such as in nuclear warfare. Viewers, let us look at the differences now between nuclear fission and fusion. In fission, a bigger or heavier nuclear splits into smaller or lighter nuclei, while as in fusion, lighter nuclei fuse together to form the heavier nucleus. In number two, nuclear fission does not require high temperature, while in fusion, extremely high temperatures are required for the fusion to take place. Number three, in nuclear fission, a chain re a reaction sets in, while as in nuclear fusion, it is not, a, a, a nuclear chain reaction does not uh, set in. Number four, nuclear fission can be controlled and energy released can be used for peaceful purposes. Well, as in nuclear fusion, the energy release cannot be controlled and, it, and that energy release cannot be used properly. 
Number five, the products in nuclear fission. The products of the reaction are radioactive in nature. Well, as in a nuclear fusion, the products of a fusion reaction are non-radioactive in nature. And finally, in a nuclear fission, at the end of the reaction, nuclear waste is left behind. But in nuclear fusion, no nuclear waste is left behind at the end of the nuclear reaction. Let's look at a very important point or part of radioactivity, and that is the application of the skills or the knowledge of radioactivity and also the uses of radioactivity. Number one, in medicine, the skill and the knowledge is used in treatment of cancer to kill malignant tumors through radiotherapy. Number two, in sterilizing hospital or surgical instruments and equipment uh, by exposing them to the gamma rays. And number three, this knowledge of radioactivity is used in providing power to heart pace setters for patients who's the, uh, who require the heart pace setters. Number two, in agriculture, we find that if a plant or animal is fed with radioactive mat uh, material, the metabolic processes of the plant or animal is better understood by tracing the root of the radioisotope. Number three, in food preservation, X-rays are used to kill bacteria in canned food, and that way the food lasts for a long time. And number four, in chemistry, the knowledge of radioactivity is used to study mechanisms of chemical reactions whereby a reactant is replaced in its structure by a radioisotope. For example, during esterification, the oxygen joining the ester was discovered that it comes from the alkanol, but not the alkanoic acid. Two, during photosynthesis, the oxygen released was discovered to come from the water. And number three, determination of the age of archaeological materials in fossils by use of carbon-14 dating technology. And number four, the knowledge of radioactivity is used in the manufacture of nuclear weapons and atomic bombs. However, we cannot end this without discussing on the dangers of radioactivity. Number one, all rays emitted by radioactive isotopes have an ionizing effect of changing the genetic makeup of living cells. So it is very important that we are able to uh, be careful about how we handle radioactive isotopes. Number two, exposure of these radiations causes chromosomal or what you call genetic mutations in living cells. Living things should therefore not be exposed for a long time to radioactive substances. Dear viewers, I would like us to look at a revision exercise here in terms of questions that I have uh, posted here and we can answer and go over them. So kindly post on the video, answer the question and I'll be able to provide feedback at the end of the video and also in my comments section. Preferably uh, go over the questions and on the comments section of this video I'll be able to post uh, the answers. Question two, uh, it's all there on the screen. Question three, lighting balance chemical equation for that decay. Number four is about completing the nuclear equations. I have another question number four, you can call it 4A and 4B. Number four is about calculating the initial mass. Uh, using the skill of half-life and number five we also have the skill of half-life remaining amount and so on being tested dear viewers we've come to the end of this video and i believe it has been very very interactive and uh, very helpful to you um we shall be having more of these videos in our 
uh, newer editions. I look forward to receiving your comments and your feedback. Once more, remember to subscribe on my channel, Steve Vitao at that 660, so that any moment I post a video, you'll be the first one to be notified. In the upcoming video, we shall look at common mistakes students make at KCSE chemistry exam. Thank you and have a blessed day.